Hello everyone. So this short video provides an overview of the IP Connect uh, capability that was introduced in the IP Link uh, codex. Uh, following the PowerPoint presentation, I will go through the web uh, configuration of the of the feature. So IP Connect is a networking feature that is included in all of the IP Link models, including our latest uh, I, uh, model IP Link MPXP. Uh, which is a codec for FM composite transport over IP. It utilizes the three network uh, ports of the platform as well as leverages the existing uh, transport reliability methods that we have such as stream splicing and forward air correction for packet loss protection and it uses them and extends uh, their capability to reliably tunnel external TCP IP application packets across uh, the wide area IP networks. Uh, by transporting the entire IP packets, the IP Connect uh, capability is also agnostic uh, to the external application. Uh, for instance, it works exactly the same way for HD radios E2X stream as it does uh, for DAB ZDI streams or SNMP traffic. So as shown in the figure here, IP packets arrive at the transmitter end uh, on one of the network ports of the IP link. Uh, those packets then become the payload of the outgoing RTP streams. Uh, which are sent uh, reliably across the wide area IP networks using stream splicing and forward error correction. At the receiving end, uh, the IP packets are demultiplexed and they are forwarded to their intended uh, destination. Using the uh, gates here, uh, proprietary RTP payload format, uh, uh, IP link can multiplex multiple signals in, in a single stream. For example, along with audio and FM MPX uh, uh, data the user has the option to multiplex uh, IP connect RS-232 or contact closures. The payload gets demultiplexed and processed uh, at, the, at the receiving end. Uh, IP connect can also be sent on its own on in a stream for example without uh, any other signals uh, although the multiplex format is beneficial for applications that require timing of uh, audio and other signals to be aligned across uh, the transport uh, networks. So besides uh, reliably tunneling the IP packets, uh, some of the other benefits of IP Connect are uh, security. It provides security for the transmitter side equipment by creating the VPN environment. It also provides LAN extensions uh, so that the native multicast and subnet broadcast packets can be tunneled and sent to multiple destinations across uh, the unicast uh, wide area network connection. So for example, E2X or EDI uh, streams can be delivered to multiple transmitter uh, site locations. And uh, using the safe IP feature of IP Connect, the external data streams can be also monitored and alarmed. Uh, if the data stream from one of the source fails, uh, backup streams can be automatically activated. So for example, using the safe IP uh, capability at the head end, you can have redundant uh, pair of uh, HD radio exporters or DAB multiplexers. IP Connect will normally transport uh, the stream from the main unit, and when the main unit uh, stream fails, IP uh, Connect will uh, start sending the stream from the backup uh, uh, unit across the wide area IP networks. So now uh, we'll look at uh, the web configuration of the feature. Okay, looking at uh, the web interface uh, for the IP Connect uh, feature, we'll look at the transmit uh, stream first. IP Connect uh, feature is uh, configured uh, within the RTP stream uh, dialog. Uh, so stream splicing configuration, forward error configuration that uh, we have for normal audio streams, you know, apply for the streams that also contain IP Connect data. For more information on how to set up stream splicing group or for a correction uh, for a stream please refer to the manual or the earlier webinar that we did on AOIP uh, reliability. So looking at the uh, transmit uh, stream uh, configuration we'll go to the basic uh, settings page first and the first thing to consider is the stream type. Uh, the option here are audio and IP connect. We select audio to create a multiplex stream consisting of audio as well as uh, IP data. Uh, when we set the stream type as audio, you also need to set the associated audio parameters such as coding algorithm. In this case, we selected Opus, uh, coding rate and other parameters that are relevant to Opus, for example, also the PCM uh, interval. 
So once the audio parameters are set, the networking parameters are set, such as the destination IP, destination port, the interface, etc., uh, you can go to the IP data tab uh, to include uh, the IP connect uh, multiplex uh, within the stream. So by default, the data type is going to be disabled. So this is your normal audio stream. Uh, the option you know, for the IP data type is UDP uh, to include UDP application. Uh, data. This was a feature that uh, was previously in IP Link uh, that allowed external UDP application data, such as that coming from automation or pad uh, source, to be included uh, in the stream. For IP Connect capability, we set uh, the data type to IP, which carries the entire IP packet. The UDP option only carries the payload of the UDP, and that setting is uh, uh, different than the IP Connect. Uh, to learn more about uh, in-band UDP capability, please refer to the manual. Uh, for IP Connect, you set the I data type to IP, and when you select that, uh, you get this uh, options of parameters to be configured. The first four options, source IP, source mask, uh, destination IP, and destination mask, they identify the flow that the stream will carry. You can carry a single flow uh, indicating specific source IP with all ones mask and destination IP with all ones mask uh, or you can specify an entire subnets of flow with the appropriate uh, source and uh, destination mask. The incoming interface is the interface uh, uh, that is set over which you expect uh, this particular flow to arrive. Typically it's going to be your management interface but you can also select uh, WAN1 and WAN or WAN2. Uh, the enable uh, proxy ARP selection uh, is there for the LAN bridging uh, application. So if, you, if your source and the destination IP are on the same subnet but separa separated across the WAN, uh, the ARP packets would not flow across the WAN. Uh, ARP packets are needed as the first communication between the source and the IP to get the MAC address. Uh, to allow seamless operation of the two devices on the same subnet, uh, separated by WAN, the IP Connect provides this proxy ARP uh, capability. So in this case, uh, we would select uh, this checkbox. Now, if you had the source IP and destination IP on a separate subnet, uh, then your normal forwarding of on the source uh, uh, device would take care of uh, of, uh, of the MAC address. In that case, you may not need to enable the proxy ARP checkbox. Looking at the alarm uh, configuration, uh, the checkbox for enable inactivity alarm uh, is selected to raise an alarm when the data stream becomes inactive. And when you select that, you have a couple of uh, timers that you can set. Uh, the inactivity timer uh, is set in seconds, so this is a number of seconds. The stream has to be inactive continuously to raise an alarm. And similarly, you have the alarm clear timer. Now, the disable uh, TX on IP uh, data failure uh, would cause uh, this stream to stop sending packets when the alarm for the IP flow is raised. Uh, this, in turn, would cause the receiver to switch to a secondary uh, transmit RTP streams carrying IP data from the backup unit. So this is the safe IP you know, capability that we earlier talked about. To uh, multiplex other signals uh, in the same payload, along with IP data and audio, you go uh, to the advanced tab and you can uh, select the aux data on and on. This is the RS-232 and then you can also select the um, uh, GPIO states if you wanted to also include those in the multiplex uh, payload. To configure IP Connect uh, uh, by itself, all you have to do is go to the stream type and select uh, IP Connect instead of audio. All of the parameters are exactly the same as far as the IP data tab is concerned. So one of the things that you have to keep in mind uh, is that when you select the audio uh, parameters, uh, the, the packet rate that this stream will send will depend on uh, the audio settings. So for example, when you selected Opus, uh, we had the PCM interval of 10 milliseconds uh, earlier. You can also select uh, 5 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds. At 10 milliseconds, uh, this audio stream will 
uh, transmit 100 packets a second. So with each packet, uh, you will have an external IP packet included in the payload. So 100 packets per second is, is the rate at which uh, the external IP application would be carried. If you have 5 milliseconds, uh, it would be 200 packets a second. If you had 20 milliseconds, it would be you know, 50 packets a second. So depending on you know, how you set uh, the PCM interval for the audio, uh, that determines how fast those audio packets are sent. Now, if you select uh, IP connect only, uh, the packet rate that the system sends is always 250 you know, packets a second. So those are the uh, things that you want to keep in mind. Uh, the maximum data rate of the external application that the IP Connect uh, will uh, carry is around 3 uh, megabits uh, per second. On the receive side, uh, the configuration is very easy. Uh, you again select the stream type to be audio and on the IP data side, uh, you just uh, select the uh, data type as IP uh, and the source IP address and destination IP address here are read-only parameters. So every time a packet is demultiplexed and forwarded out of uh, the local interface, uh, it will actually update this information. So you can see exactly what packets are being forwarded at the, at the receiving end. Hope that helped answer some of the questions on IP Connect. Uh, please reach out. Uh, uh, to technical support uh, at Gateshead for any additional questions uh, you might have. Thank you.